Hello everybody, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Micah Messer, and today we're going to be taking a look and a beginning of a long little playthrough I'm going to be doing here in Kerbal Space Program, a game I've been playing for many years now, I think about four years now, and I've seen it develop from alpha to beta, and now it's full-fledged out there and they're still releasing updates and recently they just released an expansion pack that expansion pack is called making history and i have purchased that expansion pack and we're going to get into it today looks like it's going to be a lot of fun so let's get started here so we're going to click uh, start game we're going to start a new game here and we're going to call it uh i don't know let's call it um let's see micah's playthrough why not? And we're going to do career. The flag, we're going to change that up. Let's change the flag. Let's see. What do we want as our flag? That looks pretty cool. Well, let's choose that. All right. So difficulty options in here. So there's a couple options you can do. You can change easy, normal, moderate, hard, or you can completely customize it to how difficult you want the game to be, how forgiving, uh, and such like that. So what I'm going to do... Um, not going to have missing crews, not going to respond. Um, I'm not going to have auto hire crew members. All that's going to remain off. Yep. Uh, name of con network, yes. Allow quick loading, allow reverting flights. So I'm actually going to take off allow reverting flights. Uh, I don't want that to be an option. I want it to be a playthrough. So the screw ups you see, the screw ups you're going to see. Uh, I'm also going to take off quick loading, which means no quick saving, no quick loading. If something happens, I'm going to lose it. And I'm going to die. People are going to, the Kerbals are going to die, all of that. So it's going to be uh, pretty difficult in regards to that. I'm going to keep all the others just fine. I've always found trying to te you know, tweak with these, a lot of times it becomes really, really difficult and it almost takes the fun out of it, you know when you basically can't even buy your first rocket and stuff like that. It's, to me, it just takes fun out of it. So we're going to use stay with uh, just removing those options to quick save and things like that. And Kerbal's respawning. Now we're going to do the career mode. So let's get started here. I'll let it load up. All right. Nice to meet you. I'm Gene Kerman, flight director and your guide for this quick introduction. This is the Space Center. From here, you can manage all aspects of the space program. Feel free to have a look around. Hold the right mouse button. Mouse button. There you go. To move or, can't, or use the arrow keys as you can see you can do here right click over the space center facilities to view more about them so if i right click yeah you can see there's more information about each one of these left kick when you're ready to head inside you have motion check out the training section in the main menu thanks i've got it i have played this game a long time so let me give you a little rundown of your uh the kerbal space center i uh, get your runway here this is where your aircraft and stuff are going to take off and land. This is your space plane hangar. So this is where you actually develop and create your aircraft. Then you have just north of that your mission control facility. Uh, this basically allows you to do contracts and such. Your astronaut complex is where you hire and uh, so hire your new um, astronauts, of course. And the administration building. This is where you can change different aspects. So you can make your, you know focus more on making money or reputation or science then you have your research and development this is where you uh, learned quote unquote research new technologies and such so you have better tech and stuff like that tracking station important option important facility as it tracks all of your missions ongoing it's also extremely important for your unmanned aircraft and spacecraft as well and then of course your launch pad which is has to be upgraded as all of these will have to be upgraded as I go along, not just to continue to allow me to improve my space program, but to also allow certain aircraft to even fly. Now that I've said that, we're going to go into the mission control. And the reason we're going to mission control, hello, Gene, is we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of these contracts and make them active. And as you can see, right now we have zero active contracts. We're going to make some active here. So gather scientific data from Kerbin. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of different requirements on each contract. The first ones are pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory, but it's important to read them all to make sure you're going to actually do the contract and not fail it. So for example, this will just be a tr trivial uh, contract. It'll expire in three days, five hours. 
All we have to do is recover or transmit any science to experiment data from Kerbin to achieve this goal. And once we achieve it, we'll get $6,400, one science and two reputation. Uh, and we're also, once we complete the entire mission here, our entire contract, we'll get um, a completion of $4,160 and one science and two a reputation. And then we'll also get advanced 224,000 funds. I'm sorry, it's called funds, not not dollars. My bad. I'm in the United States, so. Anyway, so we're going to go and accept that because that's going to be easy. And then launch our first vessel will also be easy. All it takes is for you to launch a vessel. You don't even have to send it up, you know, a certain altitude or anything like that. You just have to launch it, period. So we're going to accept that one, too. As you can see, we got a little bit more funds up here. Uh, but now we're going to go over to the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. And we're going to make our first uh, spacecraft and we have a couple options here you have the mark one command pod and then the kv1 onion re-entry module uh, basically the difference here this was there, there you can kind of see the similarities to real life spacecraft right so you have your original uh, gemini uh, style uh, command pod and then you also have your original, uh, I can't remember the original, uh, but the Soviets basically, this was their original command pod. Um, so basically it, you can see there's a couple of different options built in uh, into each one of these and they each have their own um, benefits, right? So this can't take as much impact tolerance, right? Um, but this weighs more and doesn't have an ejection force or an ablator. This automatically has an ablator built in. Um, this also has a little bit less temperature, but it looks cooler, right? Um, so there's, you gotta think about uh, some of these options here. So for example, I pull this out, and this is what it looks like. It looks almost like a old uh, diver's helmet. That's what it kind of reminds me of. And uh, if I took my parachute, plopped it on top, it looks kind of funny. So, um, but if I took, for example, my other command module, plug this on top, it looks pretty like, okay, that looks pretty legit, right? So you got to really kind of make your decision on what you're going to go for. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one I go for at this point. This is going to have a little bit better, uh, what you call it, um, aerodynamics than this one, but they're both going to do just fine for what I'm about to do. Uh, so I'm just going to choose this one for now and... I'm going to name this, uh, not first, first contract, not contact, first contract. We're going to save that. Now, I'm going to make sure my crew members, you see is Jebediah, Bill, Bob, and Valentina. Those are options right now. I'm going to keep Jebediah. We're going to launch this sucker. Now, you're going to notice that when I launch it, there's actually not going to, it's not going to launch anywhere. It's not going to fly in the space, anything like that. All it's going to do is send this launch pad. So to complete my contracts, I'm going to get our crew report. And then I am going to, quote unquote, launch it. I think, I don't know if that actually, I may actually have to launch it. They may have changed. I got, let's see. They may have actually changed the way it works. Oh, I'm making myself look like a fool. I've played this so many times, but... Nope. There we go. Uh, we still have to launch our first vessel. Oh, it has to come vessel off of the launch pad. Okay, so it actually does have to come off. My bad. Didn't read the text all the way. But I did successfully complete the other contract, which is really nice. So if we leave our VAB, go back to our mission control. We'll see archives completed, archives, not archives, archives completed, gather scientific data from Kerbin. I completed that, so I am successful in that. And see, active, we still have our launch our first vessel. Uh, available, we have escape atmosphere and orbit Kerbin. We're not going to worry about those at the moment. We're going to make sure we launch our first vehicle here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see here, which they both cost the exact same. This weighs a little less, so... What does that mean? It means I'm going to choose this one because I'll get a little bit better performance out of it. Maybe. Uh, I'll, the aerodynamic forces could negate that, but it's cool. It's different. So we only we don't have really hardly any options here. The only real option we have at the moment 
is this thing. And this thing in and of itself, um, it, it's, <laughs> it's going to shoot me up really fast. Uh, so I'm going to try to limit the thrust here. Let's try 50% first. Um, let's call it first flight. Save that. And uh, let's see how this goes. This could could be a disaster. Make sure we have everything we need. Uh, this will shoot us up. This will break us off of it. And this will bring us back down. All right, that should be good. So we're going to go ahead and launch. Here we go on our first flight. We're going to go up in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And we have liftoff of the first flight of the Kerbal Space Program. Oh no, oh no, we're losing control. We're losing control. Mayday, 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 we're losing control. Oh, the G-forces are climbing. Oh gosh, break off. Deploy the parachute. That did not go as planned. <laughs> that was pretty great though. That was pretty great. I gotcha, it's gonna affect the stability. If that survives, I'm gonna be impressed. And if it landed straight up, I'm gonna be even more impressed. You have got to be kidding me. Would you look at that? It landed upright by itself and it's completely intact. Nope, it's upside down. Never mind. Oh, and there it goes, flipping over. A little bit of a glitch, but it's still intact. That is amazing. That is amazing. That is awesome. Uh, can I EVA? I can EVA. Let me get an EVA report. And let me board back up and let's recover that vessel. That's impressive. I cannot believe it actually survived that. Most of the time it would just blow up. I guess since it spit all its fuel, it's just like a, you know, basically like a con container. Now what I'm gonna do here is, you notice I have an alternate launch site. If you guys didn't know, this is an option. Got it. Um, this is some different stuff here, but what I'm looking for is, I guess the debris are even taken care of. Okay, never mind then. I thought maybe we could recover the debris, but apparently we cannot. So we completed those first two contracts. Fantastic. And notice we have a lot more contracts here to complete. And uh, that's going to be uh, quite a bit, honestly. And there's no way I'm going to be able to complete all of those uh, right off the bat. Now, important thing here is you're going to notice uh, a couple important ones. Uh, in flight, that's going to have some restrictions. So I'm not even going to really worry about that at the time. But you can test this one at the launch pad. Okay, why not? Let's accept that contract. This is going to allow us basically to bring in few, food, not food, oh, funds. Bring in funds and science without actually using the booster. And I'll show you how you do that. Uh, you go back into your VAB here. We can use the same aircraft as just our spacecraft. I'm going to cut the solid fuel to zero. I'm going to save that and I'm going to launch it. Now watch this. It's going to register as if I'm testing the booster, even though there's your fuel in it. Let's run the test. Boom. I completed it. I'm going to recover the vessel. I will not lose a single dime from the actual uh, vessel's funds themselves, and I'll actually gain money. So that's a cheap way that you can do that, uh, if you guys were wondering. All right. I completed those three. I have zero active. These are all my options here in regards to my contracts so we'll get to that back over in a second we're going to go to research and development so we got engineering 101 that we can grab it's going to give me a decoupler option a thermostat which will give me science uh commu communotron 16 which will help me in regards to unmanned missions and also a communotron 16 s it's just a surface mounted versus just one that's deployed or not and then we got basic rocketry gives you a uh, basic liquid fuel engine with some uh, vectoring. It does have some thrust vectoring 
options, but it does weigh a little bit more and costs a good bit. Then you have the Hammer Solid Fuel Booster. It's a larger fuel booster than the Flea, which is what we have been using. And we also have the fuel tank, the first fuel tank you'll actually get in the game. This can be used in with this uh, rocket, uh, sorry, this rocket engine, the liquid fuel engine here in combination with it to get you what you want. So what are we gonna choose? We are actually going to research both of these because both of these are extremely important and setting me up for future flights. Now, each one of these I cannot afford yet because I don't have enough science. So my next goal is to get enough science in order to research the next level of development to continue my push to get into space, get to the moon, get to Duna, get to Minmus, Elo, all these other great places around the Kerbin uh, vicinity in Kerbal. So yeah, that's going to be my, my, my goals right here. So anyway, this is going to be the first of many videos. I hope you guys will enjoy this series. It's going to be focused on Kerbal Space Program. It's a great, awesome game. I love playing it. I've always enjoyed playing it. I've been playing it for years. So I hope you guys will enjoy. And I'll see you guys on another episode later on. And we'll take on these other contracts and we get into it. And hopefully we do not blow up in the process and we get to space. So until next time, guys, have fun.